Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Christopher Giannini, and you are listening to the Tuesday Night Solo Show. It is April 15th. That is normally tax day, but because COVID jacked everything up last year, uh, I don't think you have to have your taxes done by now. Anyway, if you need to get them done, get them done. Listen, nobody hates the government as much as me, but at the same time, I also don't want to be on the wrong side of them. So, Take care of yourself. Make sure you get your stuff in order. WinningCuresEverything.com. That's the website. Gary's worked really hard putting that thing together. Uh, you can find everything we do all in one place. Looks really sharp. Looks really good right there. Um, check it out. If we write anything, you will find it. We will we will put it out into the world, and it will take you to, uh, to the website. So go check that thing out. SBRPicks.com slash NCAA. That is our partners that uh, that we work with, and we are proud to be a part of them. Right now, they are in the thralls of Major League Baseball season, hockey season, and the NBA. So go check those guys out. And uh, in all the shows, all the content you want is all right there in one place. You can go to sportsbookreview.com as well and, and find everything you need. And then one last piece of business. We are joining up with our boys, our friends from West Lot Pirates, um, the Northwestern guys that, that we have made a friendship with over the last couple of years. I'm going to tell you that I count these guys as uh, three of my closest friends, even though I don't see them but maybe once or twice a year. Uh, thanks to the uh, modern technologies that we have available to us, I stay in communication with them more than every member of my family. And that's including the people that live in the house with me. And, and, and these guys are just the best. And, uh, and so I haven't talked to Gary about this. Oh, anyway, all that to say, we're joining up with them on draft night. Opening night, draft night, Thursday night, just for the first round. We're going to be with you. Pick one through pick 32. And, uh, and, and we're going to be cracking jokes. And we're going to be all invested. We all have got our teams. And uh, we're going to make John pick a team. And, uh, and, and then we'll go from there. Um, it's going to be a good time. Join us live. I'm sure it'll be on Twitch or Twitter or whatever Gary puts it at Facebook, um, YouTube. I'm assuming it'll be in all those places. I'm sure the podcast will be up the next day, uh, or, or even that evening. I have no idea. I don't do all that stuff. <laughs> you know, not to trust me with it, but to help promote it, to help some of the new folks that don't know my boy Sam, my boy John, my boy Scuzz. I am going to uh, hand over my Tuesday night show for the next couple of weeks until draft night. The next two Tuesday nights, I am go. I think I said tonight was a Tuesday night show. I know I did. See, I'm not going to go back and redo it and undo all this other stuff. I'm just going to let you know it's really Thursday. It is April 15th, and I'm an idiot, and I don't. I'm not used to doing the Thursday nights. Anyway, here we go. Um. The next two Tuesdays, and then uh, probably next Thursday, I will take over the show. I will try to have one of those guys come on with me because I need as much help as I can carrying this solo thing. See, I'm not really good at it. And uh, and so we're going to talk to them. What will we talk about? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit of draft stuff. That'll be important every time we talk from now on. Uh, we're two weeks away. But also... I'm, I'm sure we're just going to find whatever news of the day that they find interesting is and, and, and just let you guys get a feel for who these dudes are. Um, they're smart, they're funny, they're good guys. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a good time, uh, for the next couple of Tuesdays and, and next Thursday, let's get into the show. First thing I want to talk about today was it was announced today that Michael Jordan is going to be, um, representing, presenting, let's say that, Kobe Bryant into the Hall of Fame this year. The Basketball Hall of Fame is interesting. They have a presenter for every uh, inductee. The presenter has to be somebody who is in the Hall of Fame. And um, when I heard Jordan was going to do it, 
It made me happy, made me smile. Now, normally the presenters don't talk. The, the presenters don't do speeches. They usually just stand there with the person being induct, uh, inducted. Um, when somebody is inducted posthumously, the way Kobe is going to go in, uh, oftentimes somebody will be asked to give a speech, and they will accept the award on Kobe's behalf. Um, who that person is hasn't been named yet, to my knowledge. Uh, if it got released, it was recently, and uh, and I, I didn't get that information. I don't know if Jordan's going to talk or not. I don't know if Jordan's going to accept the award for him and give the speech. I think it's fitting that Jordan's doing it because I do think that he was the closest to Jordan that we've ever seen. I kind of selfishly wanted Shaq to do it because him and Shaq obviously – had a real relationship. Now, I don't know what his and Jordan's relationship was like. Um, you know, I, I have no idea if they talked, if they knew each other, how well they knew each other. I don't know any of that. I know him and Shaq were, were, were not super close, but they played together. And then they hated each other. And then they grew a friendship later. I think those are some of the best relationships. The, the, the ones that have had peaks and valleys, they've got a lot of depth to them. They've got a lot of, of, of just... Uh, substance to them when you've been through stuff with someone, you know, and, and I kind of wanted Shaq to do it. I, you know, not that it matters. Uh, that night's going to be a lot about Kobe and, and, and his greatness and his life. And, and we're going to have a chance to remember his daughter again. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the light's going to be like. I'm sure it's going to be some waterworks for a couple of people should be that's, that's normal. Um, you know, not everybody is a cynical bastard or a complete sociopath. And, uh, and I'm really interested to, to see the night. Normally I don't care about basketball hall of fame. Um, when people I admire get inducted, I tune in, uh, two other inductees this year going in that, uh, that I'm super interested about in super interested in, uh, one is Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan's going in and obviously the only person that can induct him, the Admiral, David Robinson. That is the most fitting pairing out of out of all of them that you could ask for. Uh, I think that was that's going to be great. Looking forward to that. And then a guy of mine, one, one of my loves, uh, Mr. KG himself, Kevin Garnett. And Isaiah Thomas is inducting, uh, presenting uh, KD, KG. I think that's fitting. Isaiah was hated by a lot of people in the NBA, still hated by a lot of people formerly from the NBA, his era, his equals. He was very disliked. KG was a tough, brash guy who those who loved him loved him, and those who didn't like him hated him. Um, he, he, he was not a man of living in the gray. He was very much a man of black and white. And, and – uh, I, I loved him. What he did with the Celtics when he won that championship, that that meant, that's you know, not that Boston was hurting for any titles or whatever, but, you know, that, that meant a lot watching that and seeing that and seeing him get a ring um, and, and seeing his relationship grow in his time in Boston with Bill Russell. Uh, for, for anybody who loves Boston sports knows that that, that matters, that that was important. Um, so I'm, I'm super interested in this year's, uh, basketball Hall of Fame. I will be watching, and uh, and hopefully over the next weeks uh, uh, we will find out who's going to accept the award for Kobe and who's going to do the speech for Kobe. Um, I do, I don't envy that person. Okay, I think the expectations for that are really high. Um, I would say let's let's find people that knew him well, that played with him, and and let's hire the best speech writer money can buy, and and let's see if we can put something together to, to, to honor this guy kind of one last goodbye. Um, let's move on. My Cleveland tribe, my Cleveland Indians last night got no hit by a white Sox pitcher named Carlos Rondon. And if you have followed baseball for a long time, last, I guess, couple of years, Carlos Rendon has kind of been – we talk about peaks and valleys, man. This guy has been as hot as they can throughout seasons, and he has struggled with injury. He can't stay healthy. Um, bounced around from team to team. Uh, seems to find himself a home in Chicago, and he was masterful last night. 
It was pretty incredible to watch. I, I was wanting so bad the Indians just get a hit. Don't get no hit. And here's the thing. This is a perfect game going into the ninth inning. And I think I think the Indians got one out, or well, White Sox have one out, and he hits the next guy. Okay. Tough at bat. It was a low pitch into the dirt. It clearly hit the guy in the foot. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people saying, oh, he didn't try to get out of the way, whatever. I mean, it was a hard, hard ball that got away from him. He scooted his feet the best he could. I do think he tried to get out of the way. I'm a little biased. I love my tribe. But at the same time, that was heartbreaking. And all I kept thinking, the game was over with. All right, we're in the ninth inning. It's 8 nothing. Okay, so thinking they're going to come back and win this thing, you know, whatever. So he goes on. And, uh, and and he gets the next two outs and gets – he lost the perfect game, but uh, but he got the no-hitter. And and it was a, a pretty special thing. When you take a perfect game in that deep, that's that's special. It finishes a no-hitter, seems a little bit leaving you wanting, uh, a little unsatisfied, but, but at the same time, um, good on him. Uh, let's hope. In April, he didn't throw his arm out. I think he threw like 110, 115 pitches. Man, um, you know, but I think he was able to – he had a special night. He had a masterful night. And uh, and I thought that was a that was a pretty cool thing I got to watch last night as I watched my Cleveland Indians not, not be very good. Today, April 15th, was Jackie Robinson Day throughout the uh, Major League Baseball. It's one of my favorite days of the year in baseball. It always catches me off guard. I'm not expecting it. I turned on the game at noon, came home to eat my lunch, and saw uh, my Red Sox were all wearing 42. And I thought, oh, that's today. I didn't know that. Okay, all right. And then you, you throughout every broadcast, any broadcast you watch, you will hear them talk about Jackie Robinson. And they will. some people will hit on, what he meant to the game. And some people will hit on what he meant in the um, uh, desegregation of our country and, and, and things that are bigger than baseball. You just hear so many stories and it's always just a fun day for me. You know, I'm sure there's a group of people out there, not me. They don't look like me that, that this day is not the easiest day. It's not the funnest day. They don't, they don't remember these things as positive things because they were hard. And, and they affect their lives. And that work isn't done yet. And and I I understand that, but I can't relate to it, you know. And and, and, and I'm smart enough to know I know that. Um, but but anyway, it, 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 it caught, like I said, it was just not something I was expecting. Um, you know, my Red Sox finally lost the losing streak. They, they couldn't win them all, I guess. Nine in a row was good. Tomorrow we'll, we'll start a new day. Um, but anyway, uh it, I always like seeing Jackie Robinson Day as, as in the game, and I guess for some reason every year it catches me off guard. I know it's in April, I know it's early in the season, but I never know when to expect it. So we'll uh, we'll get into a little bit of draft stuff. I I follow one of my favorite NFL follows is Warren Sharp. Okay, Warren Sharp is a crazy smart guy, and and he he knows more about these teams than almost every general manager. He just follows follows him so close his draft stuff he 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 printed out or tweeted out a list of names the other day this is the crap shoot that the draft is we all think that everybody's going to make their bones come thursday night all right let me give you a list of names rg3 2012 luke uh luke jopel I, i'm sure i'm saying that wrong name wrong 2013, Greg Robinson, 2014, Marcus Mariota, 2015, Carson Wentz, 2016, Mitchell Trubisky, 2017. For six years straight, those are all the number two pick in the draft. That is as blue chip as it gets. Two of those individuals got a second contract. None of them are with their team anymore. That's amazing. That we're all going to see Thursday night, and we're all, our team is going to draft somebody. Somebody else is going to draft somebody, and we're all going to assume 
They're, and you're going to hear Mel Kuyper say it. You're going to hear the guys on the NFL Network say it. That this guy's going to be with the organization for a decade. It's just, it's, it's just not going to be. It's just not. It's, there's about a 50-50 hit rate on these guys. I have my opinions about who I think is going to be legit and who I don't. I think in five, ten years. Th- this is not that long ago. Okay. Who, who's going to cut the mustard and who's not? Who's still going to be in the league and who's not? I mean, some of these guys, I don't even remember. I had to Google them to remember who the hell they were, okay? I didn't remember who they got drafted by. I didn't remember where they played college football. I don't remember anything about them. Let's let's be real careful before we start crowning everybody that gets taken tomorrow, okay? And 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 let's 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 take this for what it is. It's a draft. It's a bite at an apple, all right? I think it's amazing that six years straight. The number two overall pick is going to go down for every one of these organizations as a bust, as a waste. That's that's six years in a row. Saquon Barkley, maybe he never comes back from his knee injury. Now I think he will. I but I have I have this preconceived notion that I think these are things that I think in my brain. But six years from now, he he could easily be out of the league and never have done anything special. I don't know. Like, like, you know, that's, it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds. So that's, that's something that I thought when I listened to Warren and I heard him and I saw his Twitter, uh, talking about that. And I went through that deep dive a little bit and I started thinking of the guys going in this draft and, and I see guys that I absolutely think are going to be bust. Yeah. And, and they're projected to go really early. I don't, I don't know that that helps. So, um, Take the draft picks for what they are, for the grain grain of salt they are, for the bite at the apple that they are. So, just found that interesting. Want to share that out. Last thing I'm going to hit on, then we're going to get out of here tonight. Um, Gary teased it in our live show yesterday. It did officially get passed. The new NCAA transfer rule is official. Kids in college football and college basketball, um, I think there were five sports that – that didn't allow you to transfer without sitting out. It's strange that that means all the rest of them, like you've been able to transfer, no problems. Like if you were a gymnast and you wanted to leave LSU and go to Florida, you, you could have, and you didn't sit out. Nope. No punishment. You just do whatever you want. Um, now, 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 now football and basketball, I think baseball are now all like that. You get one time transfer rule, one waiver. Nope. No questions asked. Um, and, uh, and I'm excited. The biggest thing, no conference restrictions. So Lincoln Riley, eat it. How about that? Um, I I just find it despicable these guys that love to take transfers, but then like to stop their guys from transferring, and they always use these little caveats. Well, but I didn't take anybody from conference. Well, why well, didn't take somebody from a school where I have to, that they have to play as a guy? Who gives a shit, man? You're talking about people's lives. You're trying to control. You're talking about trying to tell somebody who and where they can, where they can go, and what they can do. I'm not, I'm not for that. All right. You start compensating these people properly, then we can start getting contracts involved. And contracts include non-competes. All right. And you could put stuff like that in there. I've been a part of that before. They hold up in court. They matter. So, yeah, you, you start you start cutting checks and, and start breaking out contracts, and you can keep your quarterback from going to TCU. That's not a problem. I don't have any beef with that. Uh, the, the most interesting thing I found out, I, I, and, and this is Wetzel. I'm going to – Dan Wetzel, my favorite sports writer right now, actively writing. He, he's it. Uh, my, my, my favorite growing up was Tony Kornheiser. Dan's a little bit like Tony and said that their, their columns are funny. Okay. Like I, I follow sports pretty well. A lot of these guys out here and, and ladies writing about the sport are all really good at what they do. They can all tell a good story. You better entertain me. I, I just don't have the, I don't have the brain capacity. You're dealing with an idiot. Okay. I don't have the brain capacity. I need to laugh. All right. Tony Kornheiser did that for a long time for me. Dan does it now. I'm going to I'm going to change a little bit of what he says but basically he talked about this on the Yahoo college podcast and, and he's writing about it and stuff. It's basically um if if you're afraid 
of your quarterback leaving your school to go to your opponent's school, and they're going to, like, sell all your secrets. If your schemes are that weak, <laughs> that – that you're afraid that this one person that's not even playing for you is the linchpin behind it all. Like they're the, they're the secret keeper for you. Then, then, then maybe you shouldn't be employed. Maybe you shouldn't be the head coach. Like maybe you're not the right person for this. And he brings up the point that if you don't think the defensive coordinators of these other teams can't watch film and they already know anything that this kid can come over and tell them that you taught them, then you're an idiot. And once again, you shouldn't be the head coach. So I, I like the way he put it. I, I, I didn't think – I mean, I, I guess I've kind of always thought things like that, but he, he just had a way of putting it into words that made more sense to me to where, what are you so afraid of? You know, this guy's not good enough to play for you. You're scared that he's going to go somewhere else and he's all of a sudden magically going to be better. They run a better program than you got. Like, you don't want to compete against him. Like, why don't – I would think that if I clearly have a better quarterback on my team than the person leaving my team, then I want to play against him because I'm not certain the quarterback they have currently is better than my guy because I don't get to practice with both of them. But I am certain the guy I have is better than the guy that's leaving because I've seen them both side by side. That's the guy I actually want to compete against because I know I have the advantage. Also, just like he knows a little bit about our trade secrets, I also know a great deal about him and his ability and his weaknesses, his lacks, his, his, his flaws. Um, so so for guys like Lincoln, um, yeah, go screw yourself. Uh, blocking kids from transferring is one of the things that just pisses me off that these college coaches do. And I'm going to tell you this. If, if, if my boy Orgeron did it, I'd be saying the same damn thing. Go screw yourself. Okay? I don't do that. All right, these kids are coming. They're working for free. Don't give me this. They get to shop at the company store, and we give them an education. Bull crap, all right? Every swinging dick out here has got an education from a university, okay? I am a moron, okay, that puts down hardwood floors for a living, okay? I have a degree, all right? Your college degree is being watered down as we speak because idiots like me have one. So, um, let's let's not try to act like that's the greatest compensation in the world. I know those colleges put like a hundred thousand dollar price tag on it. Yeah, I could try to sell my old pickup truck for a hundred grand too. Maybe I'll find a dumbass to buy it. It doesn't mean it's worth that. Okay, it just means I'm a hell of a salesman, and he doesn't know any better. See, that's a Tommy Boy quote from my, my shirt. See, I brought it all around. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me this Thursday night, normally tax day on a normal year. And um, Tuesday, I'm hoping to have one of my buddies from West Slot Pirates. Don't know who. Next Thursday, I'll have another one on. The Tuesday after, we'll have another one on. And that Thursday night, we are going live, my friends, on the draft. It is so close. I cannot wait. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please leave a review. Uh, give us five stars. Rate, review. Do all the things that you got to do. Share the show with your friends. You don't have to share this show specifically. Find one of our good shows. Share that one with your friends and, uh, and, and tell folks about it, man. Gary and I love doing this. We will be together maybe doing a live show tomorrow. I have no idea what his schedule is like anymore. But anyway, have a good night. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.